Hello and welcome to the Cornish Radio Amateur Club series of instructional videos for the UK Radio Amateur Examinations. I'm Rick Hall, G4PGD, and today we're going to tackle syllabus item 2D3, which we've called Precautions with Capacitors and Dielectrics. So, starting at intermediate license level, all capacitors are not equal. There are many different types of capacitor and it is important to select the correct type of, for the application. The main distinguishing features are the value, the working voltage and the type of dielectric. If the applied voltage exceeds the capacitor's specification, there is a strong possibility that the gap between the plates will be bridged either by a spark or by failure of the dielectric, creating a carbonized conducting bridge between the plates. This may cause excessive current to flow and is potentially hazardous. The type of dielectric also affects whether or not the capacitor can be connected with either plate to positive or whether it must be connected with a certain polarity. This type of capacitor is known as a polarised or electrolytic capacitor. Electrolytic capacitors use a solid or non-solid dielectric that does not tolerate a reverse voltage. Applying a reverse polarity voltage or a voltage exceeding the maximum rated working voltage can destroy the dielectric and thus the capacitor. The failure of electrolytic capacitors can be hazardous, resulting in an explosion or fire. Moving on to full license level. The full syllabus re-emphasises that capacitors have a breakdown voltage and that this must not be exceeded. A capacitor creates an electric field between its plates. At high electric field strengths, the dielectric may begin to conduct electricity. Its dielectric insulation fails. This phenomena is known as dielectric, dielectric breakdown. It will occur if a voltage is applied that exceeds the dielectric's working voltage, or if the capacitor is old and the dielectric is in poor condition. The field strength just needed to break down a dielectric is known as the dielectric strength and is measured in volts per meter. For syllabus item 2A1 we learnt that an insulating material does not have free electrons in its outer shell as they are all tightly bound to the nucleus. However, if a sufficiently large potential difference is applied to an insulator the electric field wrenches the bound electrons from the atom and dielectric breakdown occurs. Different materials have different breakdown voltages. For example, waxed paper has a dielectric strength of about 40 megavolts per meter and dry air about 3 megavolts per meter, which is about 3 kilovolts per millimeter. Although rare, vacuum dielectric capacitors exist and have become somewhat sought after for self-built magnetic loops, where it's desirable to have a relatively small, high-value variable capacitor that will tolerate high voltages. You might imagine that because a vacuum does not contain matter, there would be absolutely no possibility of a breakdown. Well, firstly, there's no such thing as a perfect vacuum, and secondly, another mechanism can come into play in vacuums where electrons travel across the gap between electrodes in much the same way as they do in a thermionic valve. For this to occur, either the capacitor plate temperature has to be high so that electrons are uh, liberated from the conductor and or the voltage has to be very, very high. In the next video, we will look at syllabus item 2D4 inductors 
and we'll look in some detail at the inductance and magnetic fields at intermediate and full license levels. So that concludes syllabus item 2D3, precautions with capacitors and dielectrics. Thank you for watching.